roll. Oh, yeah. Do you ever feel like money's just flying out of your account? You have no idea where it's going? Well, I know where. It's all those subscriptions. I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually paying money on. And it was eye-opening. I had to cancel the ones I don't want anymore. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. That's rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. Rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. He football season it's over but the action on the floor is just heating up whether it's the tournament or the fight for playoff home court advantage in the NBA no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year download the prize picks app today use the code JRVP for a first deposit match up to $100 use the code JRVP for a first deposit match up to $100 prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy doing things a little differently this week we got emails up the wazoo emails about senior prom an email about jeremy renner and recasting new action movies all coming up in episode 240 of the jesselnick and rosenthal vanity project jrvp junior vice president you run into an asshole in the morning you ran into an asshole you run into assholes all day you're the asshole <laughs> Have I used that quote before? No, but when you're right, you're right. You it's know. a great, it's a great quote. Uh, I love that quote. That is an Elmore Leonard quote. Mm. Uh, I don't know what story it's from or what book it's from, but uh, on the show Justified, they use that quote quite a bit, uh, and it's a great, it's a great line. Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, whenever someone is complaining about a lot of different people, you say that quote. You run into an asshole in the morning, you ran into an asshole. You run into assholes all day, you're the asshole. It is as true today as it was when it was written. We got a mailbag for you today. Uh, we just we did last week's episode and then just sat here. <laughs> and now we're starting the other one, not because of me. I'm touring all around the world uh, the past uh, year and a half and uh, the next six months, but uh, we're taking the week off next week because of Greg, because Greg has a vacation in Miami or in Hawaii with his children, his wife, his parents, and his wife's parents. Yeah, they're meeting up for the first time since our wedding. It's not halfway. Hawaii's not halfway from Japan to Massachusetts, but it's the closest you know, mm -hmm. we, we were going to get. I guess California would, would be another option. But we wanted to make Tom and Debbie work. You know, We wanted to make them go a little extra and earn it, and it's going to be fun. Um, I'm, I'm very excited for it. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, you're going to get to overhear all kinds of fun conversations between those four. <laughs> um, try not to have too much sex. Is all I'm saying. I mean, we've we've all got separate bedrooms, so <laughs> mistake. Because <laughs> you're not going to use them all. You're going to be like, "Why? We're throwing our money away. We're all just in this one bed. Why do we pay for four? Have fun. Have fun, Tom and Debbie. I would love to see if Tom and Debbie uh, would bring up this very conversation at the dinner table in Japan. Try to explain the humor uh, to them there because they'll, they'll listen to it. They're in Hawaii. They're going to be They're like, sorry, it's Tuesday night. I got to take a walk on the beach and listen to the latest Justin Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Do you think if I went to Hawaii with you guys? Yeah. Do you think if I was like, listen, I'm going to get a tattoo. I found this is amazing tattoo artist right down the beach. He's incredible. He's a fan of mine. He's willing to, to give me and anyone I want a tattoo. Who's coming with me? I know you're in. And as soon as I even started the story, you were like, oh my God, I'm in. Do you think Debbie would get a tattoo with us? No. You don't? I think... Nobody would. The only one that would possibly is Emika. I think I could talk Walker into it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I get Walker on board. Uh, I think I think Debbie. When people get old enough, they're like, I'm, I can't do any damage to this. Let me get some ink. You want to get a tattoo with Anthony Jeselnik? I think you're taking that chance. Okay, uh, we'll, Tom, we'll see. I bet Tom's Tom maybe still thinking about trying to get in that Jewish cemetery one day, not getting the tattoo. Debbie, Debbie wants nothing to do with that Jewish cemetery. She wants a real cemetery, and so she, I think she'd get the tattoo. Although one of the things you know when you're when you age. 
the skin gets a little looser. I don't know if that could be an issue. Not if you get it when you're old. You know what I mean? <laughs> fair. Like what would the, what would the tattoo be? Let's say me, you, and your mom are getting a tattoo in Hawaii. Um, we could just go hula girl. You know, or what if I get Debbie's face tattooed on me? <laughs> Debbie gets my face tattooed on her, and then you get a face that's like half mine, half Debbie's. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. It would be amazing. That's my ideal. And I think that the Hawaiian tattoo artist can do that the best. <laughs> They're so good at that. All right, so we're gonna crank through as many emails. As we can uh, before Anthony just passes out from giving too much funny in one day. The first one is uh, from Jonathan in Austin. It was just there for the first time. I like it. Here's a thought. It's to you as well, Aaron, uh, Rummy, and Miss Kim. Here's a thought I had the other night after a pre-roll. Is there any classic action movie that could be made better if you swapped the original star of the movie with another action movie star? For example, would Bloodsport have been better if Stallone played Frank Ducks instead of Van Damme? Or if Schwarzenegger had played John McClane instead of Bruce Willis? I mean, no one know on those, but no, I, I would no. say. Absolutely. Now, what classic action movie could you ruin the quickest uh, by swapping out stars to? You could ruin almost any. I mean, listen, the action movies that I loved as a kid, like, were perfect. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd heard, I think I heard that that Schwarzenegger was talked about being in Cobra. You know, that like, there were fights between Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Like, Aaron, you read that book, mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. la the Last Action Heroes. Yeah. Talked about this a lot, that you could switch out Schwarzenegger and Stallone in almost anything. And I think you're making it worse, but it's still the same movie, kind of. You know, I mean, Stallone but, could do Total Recall. Stallone, I feel like, could not do Terminator. I don't know why. Just see I mean, it feels the, like it'd be bad. Imagine if they had put O.J. Simpson as Terminator, like as they were going to do. Or like, I think Lance Hendrickson, who was a, a cop in the movie, was going to be a Terminator. Like, you yeah. could have fucked that movie up in any multiple ways. What I think would make it better is you take Steven Seagal and you put them in those movies. <laughs> if you put Steven Seagal in Cobra, it is so much funnier. <laughs> like, if you put Steven Seagal in Terminator, it's the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> Steven Seagal in Die Hard is like a 20-minute movie. It's like, it's, he, it's, Steven Seagal looks down the elevator shaft and is like, I'm not doing that. And that's, that's the end. Uh, he just keeps walking around going, no, I got a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Like, it would be so good that I would put Seagal in anyone. And then there's one movie. Did you ever see... I remember being obsessed with this movie as a kid. Have you ever seen, fuck, it was called, I think it was called The Perfect Weapon. It starred a guy named Jeff Speakman. Yep, I've seen it. That the, the, tr the commercials when you were a kid made it look like, how have you not heard about Jeff Speakman? Yep. You like Schwarzenegger, you like Stallone, why don't you like Jeff Speakman? And then, then the movie came out and no one ever talked about it ever again. That I was like, what, where's Jeff Speakman? Why aren't we seeing Jeff Speakman in every single movie if he's, if he's the perfect weapon? Who's the other guy? The guy, he died recently, Remo... Remo Williams? Remo Williams, The Adventures of Remo Williams. Mm -hmm. Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. And then that, the adventure ended right there. <laughs> Remo Williams was on TV every time I turned it on for a 10-year period where he, like, ran through sand with like an old Asian guy training him so that he could be the, he could be the total badass. And it was awesome. But yeah, that's my answer is Steven Seagal in any movie. It would be tough to, to, it would be very easy, as he said, to ruin just about anything. Any Keanu movie feels like it would be ruined without Keanu because he just gives uh, such a vibe that it would be hard to imagine replacing them. But yeah, replacing them with like anything, like any of those big time 80s action movies, you replace them with Paul Reiser, it's not gonna work. No. That's true. Even though Paul Reiser was in Aliens. Yep. Yep. He does. He gets he's, he was great in Aliens. Yeah. I would like to see um I think um uh Django Unchained, but take out Jamie Foxx and put in um uh the fuck, what's his name? Oh fuck. Home improvement. Tim, Tim <laughs> Allen. You put Tim Allen in Django Unchained as Jamie Foxx ruins the movie. <laughs> Ruins it. I would. Would would you watch it? Yes, you would. But it would not be a good movie. Django too. Uh, if anyone wants to, yeah, send us in like a Photoshop of 
of a Django Unchanged movie poster with, with Tim Allen. I would I would laugh at it. I would maybe put it in a future show. You know the original John McClane was supposed to be? No. Oh, um, yeah, dude, don't tell me. Uh, Frank Sinatra. Yes. Yes. Frank Sinatra. Yeah, the book it was based on is so old. It was mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra. And then what? Eastwood was their second choice when it Eastwood would work. No, it would, I mean, it would have been different because he was he, he Eastwood would have been the old worked, man though. doing it. It would have yeah. worked. But he would. I'm saying if he was a younger man, like a younger Eastwood doing that, I, you could see that. People don't understand how crazy it was to have Bruce Willis in that movie. And how it just it just it worked in a way that no one could have ever predicted. Yeah. Without Bruce Willis, that movie is nothing. Mm. Um, unless you get Steven Seagal. Our next one. And from- I, when I say Steven Seagal, I mean Steven Seagal now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean like sixty-five, like can't stop eating pasta, Steven Seagal. That's who I want. Oh, I did fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, when I'm ready to dance and I don't get to dance, you fucked up. Right. I don't know if we want to do music between each one or if I, if I just want to move on. Because uh, you never know when I'm going to be ready to move on. This one's from Gavin. Uh, a few months ago, me and my friend bought tickets to your 420 Minneapolis show coming up in April. Uh, everything was looking good for us until last night when we realized it's also the day of our senior prom. I love it. You got you got the high school crew. To both of us, the choice seemed obvious, but we still might regret if we skipped the dance. We were wondering what your thoughts were on the subject of us doing the classic prom night gimmick, switching between the two buildings all the while swapping my suits and waiting for a hijinks to ensue to, to do a little bit of both. Uh, please help us, Anthony. We promise to give you more of our money. I don't know how switching your suits would help you in any way. No. You're not trying to like make your date think you're there and then come back. You're not coming back and forth between the show. If you got, listen, if you got early show tickets, it's a 7 p.m. show. You're out of there by 8.30, 8.40 tops. You can make your prom. You're not going to dinner, but it doesn't sound like you guys have dates. It sounds like you are each other's dates and you can just go to prom by yourself. I recommend that. You don't need the pictures. Come to the prom. If you come to your prom in your tuxes, if you come to the show in your tuxes, I will bring you backstage and I will take a picture with you. Oh, shit. Otherwise, if you got late show tickets, I can't help you. You should go to your prom. Yeah. Thank you for the money. Try to resell the tickets if you can. If you don't, I'm happy to stare at two empty seats that have been paid for. It's going to be two <laughs> sold out shows. They're going to be great. And if this, is, if this is, it spices it up for you at all, this year, April 20th, two years sober for me. <laughs> and I might come on stage, lit the fuck up. I hope. You want to see not. Justin like, come off the wagon on 420? It's, it's, it's going to be a great show. Do not miss your prom for it. But if you can come to the 7 o'clock, you can get to your prom by 9 p.m. and have a great night. And come in your tuxes. I will take a picture. That's, right. That's Hopefully what I they live closer. They're in Minneapolis. I would say that'd be worth it. Uh, that's a good story. You love Jessalyn. Like you're getting the picture, and then you run out of there. And the post prom is half the fun, anyways. Mm-hmm. And so you're getting you're getting that. Whatever the do people still like? I mean, I'm sure they party after the prom, but do they still like go somewhere? Like we would get the weekend off. Like that would be on a Friday or whatever. And then people would like drive to Cape Cod or do shit. No. I don't know. See, if we our did thing anything. by my senior year. The, the parents were like on lockdown where they made us go to like a school event after prom like you had to go everyone had to go to this one thing and if you didn't go like you were in trouble but they would like if you were in student council you had to go it was like you it was like a requirement so my date was in student council i had to be at this fucking stupid thing so kids weren't like jetting off and i feel and, like know, we maybe wasted. did that too and then yeah well, then we went to like a quote-unquote party but it was like at some parents house where it's like it was a party. You could they let you drink, but you were just all sleeping over there. It, it was fine. And then I think people went to Cape Cod the next day. But you don't want to miss your your senior prom, though. I went to multiple senior proms because uh, I did it like that. You know, I had friends that were older. I can't even say I was being cool actually because it was just a friend that was a, a year older. But I did go the year before. I went to mine. It was fun. Greg was breaking hearts. I I was barely allowed into my own senior prom. I did not go to any other proms. Uh, I went to mine. Our next question is going to be asked after we play some goddamn music. You just jump the gun on me. I was also going to speak up that 
that my prom was one of the worst nights of my life. So. Really? Why? Okay, got to hear that. Uh, just, I had been broken up with a few months before, and uh, I was still hanging on super hard, and mm. our groups decided to hang out with her group, and it was just a nightmare, and I wish I hadn't done it. And now she's your daughter. <laughs> That's too bad. I think I had a great time. I, I she was, was actually married to one of the guys from my group. No. Wow. Yeah. I was very much in love with, with my girlfriend uh, for my senior prom. She, she was a year younger. That was a fun night. But a lot of my friends had left. All my better friends in high school were older. Uh, so we just had a couple of us. Next question. It's from Amanda. I had a dream. This is Amanda. That I was at your show, and my laugh made you laugh, and then we became friends, and I think we fell in love. How important is a laugh to you? Could you date someone perfect in every way, but they had an awful laugh? Love you guys, Amanda. I could not imagine dating someone who was perfect in every way, but I hated their laugh. Like, And listen, you don't have to have... Not everyone has a great laugh. There's some laughs you're like, oh, that's infectious, whatever. But there's like, there are obnoxious, like, you can't... I can't be around you laughs and i've never even thought of dating someone like that mm. who has like a really really annoying laugh like what about someone like me who a lot of times it just comes out as like a ha great a ha is great <laughs> a ha is great it's like the her, 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 her. it's like shut the fuck up that's not a real laugh i don't believe you uh stop it or if they think it's it's and it's not only the laugh it's that they think their laugh is charming when it's not so they think they're being like, they're bringing joy to the world. And it's like, no, you just fucking suck. La la laugh how you want to laugh. But if it's ugly, we're not getting together. I told Liz that when we started dating. I was like, listen, it's me and you. I'm going to be loyal. But if someone comes along and their laugh's not too bad, <laughs> I get a pass. <laughs> would you date someone whose laugh sucked? That would be tough. I feel like, yeah. I mean, or that just didn't laugh at me at all, because because I'm hilarious and I, mean, I need listen, I need the support. Now listen, I've known I've known your wife for 15 years. Never heard her laugh once. No, I I still am proud that I can make I can make her laugh. It's definitely harder. I mean, you got the same audience for like 17 years. She knows where you're going with things. But like I I don't even remember what the joke was yesterday at dinner. But I made one that got all three of the you know I got both kids and her to laugh hard, and I was like. That feels good. You can. I still got it. I'm sure it feels good. Every comedian I know who was married, they are their wife's least favorite comedian. Right. Do you know what I mean? That then that, that's just the way it goes. This is nothing about them. It's just like you're, you spend too much time together. They grow to hate you. Walker has maybe my favorite laugh I've ever heard. It's infectious. I can't. I can't imitate it. But like everyone at school knows it. It's like high uh, high pitched little giggle that that like is almost his calling card to the point where like people just like having him around because mm -hmm. his laugh is so awesome. Yeah, work on your laugh. If you got a bad laugh and you're young, work on it. Fix it. <laughs> Have a good one. I re yeah, I remember Amica heard me and Dean because we both sometimes just do a little like build up. Ha! And she's like, I didn't know people actually just laugh by uh, exclaiming ha. But some people do. Yeah, I, do, I totally I, I agree with it. You know what I realized going through all these emails? I like the short ones. If you can be short and punchy, you move to the top of this list. Uh, like Sarah, who says, hey, Greg, uh, will Anthony ever do ad copy again? How long is the ban? Is Anthony allowed to have any interaction with sponsors? Love the show. Hope you guys do another mailbag soon. We're doing it right now, Sarah. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do uh, the, the ad copy again. In the beginning, it was fun, and then it gets repetitive, and then I find weird things to do, and then we get in trouble, and we lose money. So I thought, why not just cut out the middleman here? Uh, I can fuck around the rest of the podcast. I'll let Greg do the ad reads. Occasionally, I have, I have friends in advertising who will say, hey, uh, we got a special one for you. We did this just for you. And I'll be like, okay, I'll read the copy. That happens once in a blue moon. You jump in and plenty. I know, though. I, you jump I'll, in plenty. I'll jump in. But I just don't. I do it to not get us in trouble uh, because I cannot follow rules. I look at it like uh, I'm earning my almost 50%. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. this is me um, delivering. Yeah. That's what I ask Greg to do. You know, when I'm on the road, you kind of do the the, the legwork. Uh, I will get us the overall deal <laughs> and make sure we get paid. Aaron, is that a new song? 
Yeah. Cool. I like I like moving at this good pace. I, there's a lot of good emails. There's no way we're going to run out. And uh, I like this next one. It's about if you had the power to swap a physical or character attribute between Emika and Liz, what would each of you acquire and give away? For example, say Anthony loves Emika's toes and decides to trade away Liz's annoying habit, fill in the blank. Liz would then get an upgraded toes and Emika would then have that habit. <laughs> I, I would love to know what you were thinking when you chose this question. I wanted to see what you said. Um, let's be real. I, I'm too smart to answer this, but I wanted to see what you said. Look, I date Liz for a reason. We've been together for a reason because I believe that she is perfect in every way. There you go. I would not change her personality. I would not change anything about her physically. But if I had to, between Emika and Liz, I'd swap their faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd swap to keep everything's the same but now but now Craig's Craig's with Emika with a Liz face and I'm with Liz with an Emika face otherwise I'm happy I'm a happy I'm in a happy relationship I'm if she's listening baby I love you you're perfect but I would switch faces in a, in a second. I do love Emika's face, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I'm too smart. I can't, I can't, I can't make any changes here. Maybe Emika would like. I feel like everyone with like straight hair likes um, nice, thick, uh, curly type hair. So maybe just for Emika's sake, I'd give her. I mean, Liz's got a beautiful mane there. Maybe mm -hmm. just give her that for a little bit because I, I think Emika would like it. She's always curling Cur her hair. Yeah, curly hair is like curly hair is a difficult. Like Liz has, you know, different things she's got to deal with having curly hair. That I don't know if she if she wants the curls. It's quite across the bear. No, she but. doesn't want um, this question being answered or asked. Uh, but I'm glad I did because it was a funny answer. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, you, when, you, when you play that, like, are you playing it yourself on a violin, or are you just like hitting a button and a song plays? Oh, I'm I'm stringing that bow, and I'm uh, and you're, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're doing. Stringing that bow, Kevin uh, asked. So I was listening to an episode last week at work and heard about uh, the great website that shows all your recommendation stations. Uh, it's uh, jrvprecommendationstation.com. Shout out to that guy. Uh, once again, he's updating the site again, and you should donate to uh, what he asked you to donate to, like the charity on his about page, which I, I forget off the top, and I can't check right now because I have a similar because of what's going to be next on this email. Decided to check it out, typed it into a browser on my work computer. Apparently, there's some not safe for work items in there, and the website got flagged for pornography. Two days later, I got an email from HR signing me up for a mandatory security awareness training that's two hours long. I guess my question for you guys is, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Aaron, when we used to let Aaron recommend things, Aaron would recommend some fucked up stuff. Sorry, I like what I like. Yeah. And, I, and th you know that's 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 Aaron's prerogative. Uh, I I'm, I do not know why they would flag uh, pornography, but I wonder if there's I don't there anything that with the, the title could have been. It's the same thing. The same thing happens on my work computer too. So I can never check it on my work computer. I can check it on like my work iPad or or if I wanted to on Emica. So if I if I need to check it, I, I could check it, and I like it to, to remember. It's a great site. Uh, but yeah, same thing happens. Uh, to my computer. Now, HR's never come down uh, and talked to me. I mean, they know I love looking at porn on uh, my computer, so mm -hmm. it's like it's not out of out of the ordinary. Yeah, I mean, at the NFL, that's just what you do. <laughs> uh, I would think, like, listen, when you have your two-hour meeting with Human Resources, just tell them that you got molested, <laughs> and now you just don't even know what's going on. You're just kind of following out the string and see where that gets you. But uh, JRVP, wait, G, what's it? JRVP recommendation station dot com, I believe. Yeah, you can come watch it. Looking at that site, if, I, you, if you if you go back far enough. Yeah, I love it because uh, look, if if you and we get a lot of emails and sometimes I don't use them. That's just like I love you know, 
I love how many books you recommend. You've gotten me more into reading. It's like you want to have the best reading list ever. Just go back on that website. And, I go uh, on it all the back. time just to be like, did I recommend this already? I, I, I do that too. Has it gotten done yet? Uh, I love this one. And then I masturbate <laughs> to, the, to the images there. And you're welcome. Aaron, do we have a glow stick budget? Um, no, I'm sure we could scrounge some up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you. Got two weeks. Okay. Simple question from Kay. Where do you see yourself in three years? I mean, in 10 years. Sorry. That's a hilarious way to fuck that up. <laughs> Ah, um, uh, because she asked uh, for the three of you, and I fucked that up. Uh, so it was a simple question for the three of us. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? So that's a good question. 10 years, I'm 55 years old. I would, I would think that I've done one more tour. That's might, it? I mean, in between, uh, like in between, in the next 10 years, I bet there will be, let's say I do another, like this special comes out at the end of the year. And then I spend, you know, the, it's the three years to to write it and, and get it going before I do another tour. So it's like five years till there's another special. If I'm like on all cylinders rolling, hmm. there's no decline in ability as I age, which I assume there will be. You know, I would guess. I mean, Marin's if doing more shows, one, more yeah, things than ever. Yeah, but Marin's like a, Marin's a talker. Marin, Marin and I are. We put things together differently. That he's more like he's going to get better with age. I believe I'm going to get worse. I think I'm in my prime, and let's see how 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 uh, much things decline. But I could see it being six years till the next special, if there is another one. If there's a chance, I'm done after this. I don't think that's going to be the case, but until I write another joke that I'm like, I've got to get up on stage and do this, I'm, for all intents and purposes, done after this one. But I would like to think I have one more in me. And then, then I think that will be it. One, maybe two, and I'm done as a stand-up comedian. If I, uh, after this special, I get to writing, and what I'm writing doesn't become stand-up and becomes instead a book, Mm. then that could be my life from here on out. And I think that would be a good one. So maybe in 10 years, I am a, uh, a former comedian that people think of more as a writer. That would be uh, a great goal. Um, I might mm. be known as the guy who married his dog. <laughs> and there's backlash to that. Yeah. And I don't really get to work anymore. Who knows? Uh, but I, I, I would guess in 10 years, we're still doing this podcast. Wow. Me, Greg, and Aaron. And that's all they do here. All things comedy's gone. It's just JRVP sharing this building with people we don't know. Yeah, I thought it was harsh uh, of Liz to leave you after the face swap comment, but Rummy was a great rebound. Mm -hmm. When Rummy loving, when Rummy asked me to marry him, I could not say no. <laughs> I knew there would be backlash, but what am I going to do? I'm not going to break his heart. <laughs> He's a good boy. Ten years from now is one year after Walker will have graduated high school. So if he is choosing to go to college, uh, he would be in college. And which is an interesting time because yeah. it's sent, it's certainly the drop dead date of, uh, when Emika has been threatening to leave the country, mm -hmm. uh, which could be a factor. But now remember, she's got Liz's <laughs> face. That passport's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That is there. She's gonna. She's also gonna run into some uh, r r r r racism in Japan, as you, as you used to like to say. Um, <laughs> uh, also, her parents are gonna be like, "What the fuck?" Ten years from now, look, I'm trying to keep this football podcast career going. It's tricky. You know, there's no retirement fund for uh, a retirement. You know, I'm not a full-time employee. Uh, these careers. They don't last forever necessarily in sports media. It's not a, it's not as lucrative. It's plenty lucrative for me, and certainly I'm doing well considering it's media. But it's not. A, I'm not on tour like Jesselnik. So I get. I need to. I need to save some money. I'm in my prime now too. I, I believe it. Uh, will I be in my prime ten years from now? I mean, not many sports media uh, still are, uh, but some some keep it going. So I, I'm gonna keep doing it until the wheels fall off because. What else am I going to do? I don't know how to do anything else. It'll transition. 
Uh, I don't know if it'll still be at the NFL. I don't know what the NFL media is going to be like, but I believe in myself. I've gone through a lot of transitions, even in the 20 years that I've done it, that I'll find a way to figure out how talking about football can keep uh, keep me paying for those plane tickets to Japan. In 10 years, you'll be working for me. <laughs> This has been your dream the whole time. You always used to be like, oh, yeah, you know, it won't be long till JRVP is paying all your bills and stuff. And first of all, have a little faith in your boy. Uh, secondly, I'm, you know, it's not enough to pay all those bills at, at this point. I'm living in L.A. with, with two kids that are going to go to college. And uh, I'm glad I got I got the NFL helping out. I'm not talking about JRVP. I mean, you work for me. <laughs> I mean, if I have to. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, it, you'll, it'll be fun. <laughs> we'll have a good time. All you need is a driver's license. Like, we'll figure it out. But we're gonna be, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna like drive. We're gonna drive around to colleges and visit your kids. Right. It's it's gonna get awkward for like a few years. Um, that we're sharing Emika with Liz's face. <laughs> but, but it'll be cool, too. It'll also be a way to get closer. Well, I feel like by in 10 years, they'll have like, they'll, the face swap will have like taken, taken effect. That now it kind of just looks like we're dating twins. Uh, oh, wait. How about Aaron? What yeah, are you doing yeah. in 10 years? Yeah. Uh, I assume I'll still be here. <laughs> I'll be running the GRVP network. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I will have a young teenager, which is crazy. Terrifying. Wow. Terrifying. Yeah, That's nothing. That is, well, yeah, that is something. Um, as someone who has a, uh, she might as well be a teenager now. She's 12. Uh, she's in middle school. It's great. It's underrated. People people talking about like, oh, it's, you know, oh, I feel bad when your kids are getting, no, you love them more. Your kids, when they're young, they don't even know what's going on. They're better. It's It gets better. So you're going to disagree. Enjoy it. They're like puppies in the beginning. They're all cute and great. And then when they get older, you're like, how can I get rid of this? Yes, they bite. <laughs> they bite. Mm -hmm. That's true. They do. And you got to trim their nails. Yep. They don't like it. Ellis will be 22 at that point. That'll be... Wow. That'll be pretty crazy. That'll be insane. <laughs> when, when Ellis... I can't wait to see where Ellis goes to college. And I'm very excited to see what Walker does... Uh, whether it's college or, or whatever. Uh, you know what? There's a good chance in 10 years, your whole fucking family's working for me. I mean, I, sure. I mean, uh, okay, I mean, I think Ellis can do better. I, she might be a published author by then, uh, or she'll be working uh, maybe towards that goal. She's been steadfast since she was a very little girl, that that's what she wants to do, and she works hard at right now. And we're going to listen to this, Ellis, together. In ten years, and look back at uh, how much your dad believed in you. And she'll still want to come. She'll be writing, but she'll publish. But she'll okay. still want to come in here and sit down and tell us how lame we are. She'll, That'll be her job. She'll work for Jessel Corp Imprint. Mm -hmm. You'll be a big time author by then. I'm not big time. Has there ever? been a time that you wrote a joke Anthony and realized it was pretty similar to another comics material but then you decided to keep it if so what was your joke what was the other joke you were comparing it to you how did you analyze it and get to a point of comfort uh, that it was not being joke stealing or parallel thinking that was too close for comfort there was a lot of questions like this ish uh, and so I wanted to ask a great question it happens I can think of a couple different examples off the top of my head one of my first uh, my first album I had a joke um, I had to, my uh, my uh, my sister wanted me to watch the kid and I had to baby proof my apartment you know but I did a good job you know that thing that he was over there for four hours and he never got in uh, and like, I remember telling that joke and then people being like, oh, I have a joke like that. And I was like, well, I already did it on my album. I don't care. Like, I think there were a lot of jokes, mm. baby proofing men, keeping them out that it was like, all right, mm. I already got this one. I'm not going to worry about it. And then I, a couple specials ago, I had a joke that was like last night I was driving and I ran into a dear, a dear, dear friend. <laughs> and then when the special came out, someone was like, Nikki Glazer has that exact joke. And it was like literally word for word, like the other night I ran into a dear, a dear, dear friend. And I was, and Nikki was, and I were both like parallel thought, like no one stole anything. It's, it's totally fine. And it's a small joke. If you've got a huge bit that like, that, you know, that it's too obvious, then I would, I might throw it out or I might be like, we got to talk about this right now. Uh, but I've never had anything that's like, it's either yours or mine. Some people... 
Megan Gailey was my opener on my last tour, and she had a bit about her uh, grandma having Alzheimer's. And it kind of ended the same way my Alzheimer's bit did, where, like, she was happy that, she, that like, her husband was dead. And, uh, and it was similar to my joke that she just didn't do that joke when she was opening for me. But, like, when she did her special, she did it in the special. It was fine. That uh, I don't, I don't, I, I've never thought of stealing a joke or been worried about it. I'm in my own lane that it's never really uh, come up. But I can think of a couple examples where it's like, oh, parallel thought, you're fine. Right. It's going to happen. That's a great joke because it's so short. I remember that joke from your special. Mm -hmm. I like your very short ones, and I like when they're silly to sort of break up the uh, less silly ones. Yes. And that was like a seven-word joke. I love that joke. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. And now it's time for Ad Copy. Aaron, clear your throat, bro. <laughs> That's been thinking that all show, uh, but I'm too polite to say it. You know what I'm not too polite to do? Uh, play a little prize picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court advantage, no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. You can get on in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into cash. Uh, Prize Picks, I like they're the only daily fantasy sports off the app that offers injury insurance so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured so for basketball players if you have a player who exits the game in the first half does not return in the second that player projection won't count against you uh, the rest of your entry stays live it's really simple to play you can make your picks uh, and start playing submit your entry in less than 60 seconds uh, mentioned basketball i went on the prize picks app i looked at we got baseball starting uh so i'm doing i'm gonna you know, do a little shohei otani at least i like this i'm gonna recommend a little shohei otani over one and a half total bases you don't think he's gonna show up in this soul series uh in asia Korea. and well it's i know but i'm saying i mean specific. i said i'm, I'm not soul. correcting you yeah. He's just, I'm just saying if he's in Asia, he's going to step up. One and a half bases, what's that? That's nothing for him. Uh, and then I'm also going to go over or more one and a half uh, total hits, runs, and RBIs for Xander Bogarts, the former Red Sox. I don't know anything about baseball anymore. Don't need to. Uh, download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code JRVP for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, use the code JRVP for a first deposit match up to $100. Uh, you got quick, quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Again, use the code JRVP for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I mentioned at the top of the show during the pre-rolls. I don't know if you mentioned you heard this, Anthony. Uh, you ever feel like you have too many subscriptions? You have so many subscriptions, you just got money flying out of your bank account, and you're not really paying attention to where it's going. And if you're like me, you've got like multiple cards, multiple subscriptions. You can't keep track of it all. Uh, those subscriptions end up taking a lot of money out of your pocket. Streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, maybe a gym that you used to uh, be a member of, parenting apps. It's endless. Uh, I'm guilty of this. So I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. It was eye-opening. I had them cancel the ones I didn't want anymore. For me, it was, it was like the TV thing. Like I didn't realize I still had a Showtime. We were not watching any Showtime. I got that for, like, the Americans or whatever. Was that on show? Too? I don't even remember what it was. There was some show, Homeland, that Emika wanted to watch four years ago, and I was still paying for Showtime, like, three years later. Rocket money. I'll say this. Out. Mayor of Kingstown is still getting it done. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not an anti-Showtime thing. For us, we had watched everything. Uh, Rocket Money is a personal finance app. It finds and cancels your unwanted subscription. It monitors your spending. It helps you lower bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users. It's helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscription uh, can also let you know send you an alerts when subscription prices changes it can potentially negotiate uh, the change for you uh, look rocket money lets you know what's going on with your finances maybe maybe your wife or your spouse or your husband uh, is signing up for stuff and only one person 
you know, takes care of the money. It's good to straighten it all out. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. That's rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. Rocketmoney.com slash JRVP. And that was ad copy. Clear your throat. I did. <laughs> he did. All right. <laughs> Hey guys, Igor here. This is from the email. Writing all the way from Croatia. Anthony talked about going on a world tour in the near future. Wondering if he has any plans to include his sort of homeland, Slovenia, because that's where Jeselniks are from. Uh, also, does he have any? Does having any Slovenian connections make him a Luka Doncic or Anze Kopitar fan? Is that a soccer Andrzej, player? Anze, Anze. Is that a soccer player? He's Kings. Kings. Oh, Kings. my bad, my bad. The same way Greg is a fan of all Japanese athletes. Wait a second. I, I, take, I take exception to that. Uh, same question for Aaron in German, since his last name does sound Germanish. Uh, answers from 35, 39 to 45 don't count. Love the show, especially the Patreon version. Those who aren't giving you money don't know what they're missing. Um, I, I, listen, I, when I see... Like, I don't know anything about Slovenia. I just heard that, like, my family was from the land that Slovenia now is. But I don't know. When we came over, I feel like it was, like, Prussia. So I have no yeah. real Slovenian pride. Someone once gave me a Slovenian flag, and I did not recognize it or know what to do with it. <laughs> when I hear someone is Slovenian, I'm like, oh, my ears perk up for, like, a second. But it would almost be like, oh, they're from Pennsylvania. Like, that's about as much as I'm like, oh, I don't have anything to really say to you, but okay. Uh, I don't root for Luka any more or less than I would if he was not Slovenian. Um, if the Olympics are going and Slovenia is playing someone, I'm like, oh, I hope they win, but I do not watch it. I do not care. I would love to go there. It's a beautiful country. I do not think they care about me or care that I am technically Slovenian. So I do not think that will be on the, uh, on the European tour. Mm. But I would, uh, I would like to go there. I think I am part Croatian as well on my mom's side. My mom would talk about that, and I did not care at all. <laughs> well, yeah, at this point, how long has your actual family been in America? A couple, a few generations. Okay. I mean, you know when Jeselnik started? When I was born. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so I, in theory, I would be, I would be fan of German, you know, athletes by this logic because the Rosenthal's that were there. My brother did the research for like our our family was there for like 200, 250 years, which is a long time. Yeah, but didn't it, didn't it end badly? It didn't it didn't end well? So that you know, I I resent uh, that I'm a fan of all. I'm not a fan of all Japanese athletes. Did I name my son? Walker K. Rosenthal after K. Nishikori, who made his long-awaited comeback in the Miami Open last week. Very exciting. Uh, yes, I did. We were going to name him K. Rosenthal if Emika's friend didn't already name her son Kato. Uh, but that was because we were sharing it together, and I was becoming a big fan, and he's very entertaining to watch. And it was something to to do with my wife that she would that we could be fans of the same uh, person. And do I wear a lot of Naomi Osaka gear? Yes. It's very stylish. We all do. She's also fun we all do. to watch. Um, what about you, Aaron? Do you, do you root for anyone overseas based on, I, I don't know what, the Brugards. Would it really be German? Brugard is German, yeah. yeah. But uh, the wrong my family's been here yeah. since 1870 or so. so. Okay. Not, no real connection. I am an Oilers fan. I'm wearing the Edmonton Oilers t-shirt right now. So uh, Leon Dreisaitl is pretty cool. He's German. Who do but, you root uh, for when you're watching World War II documentaries? <laughs> The U.S. of A, baby. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Went to the uh, museum very famously, if you recall. Hmm. My kids are my my Emika's getting into the Shohei of it all in L.A. And I just found out last week, if you don't have Spectrum, you cannot watch the Dodgers. There what? is no digital option. Yep. What? Yep. It's so annoying. And granted, I you would have thought I would have known this before now, but it didn't bother me. You can't do it, and you can't even. They're not even. They don't even offer. I would give them hundreds of dollars for a digital package because my family wants to watch Shohei. What we will not do is uh, sign up for Spectrum Cable. I can't believe that this, the ownership who would spend billions of dollars on the team would not make it easy in the way that the guy who bought the uh, Phoenix Suns was like, from this day forward, games are free to watch on TV. Just like put it out there to get the fan engagement. Great. Right. Every single person in Los Angeles would watch the Dodgers 
I can't believe they don't have. You're uh, you're losing have two kids who want to become Dodgers fans uh, from watching every day. Both your kids died. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Dodgers. I was bummed. I'm going to uh, next week. I'm going to opening day, and I was like, "Fuck! I should have invited." I was thinking I should have brought you know Greg and Walker, but now I'm thinking I was wrong to even think that. Who in the family now is a Dodgers fan? I Walker. Is Ellis into the Dodgers? I think we're all gonna. Get, I think Emika will be probably number one in, in Walkers too. But I, I, I'm now. So I'm gonna, I'm let's say get into let's it. say I got four tickets. Okay. Liz and I go into the game. <laughs> I'm inviting you. Who is it? You and Emika, or you you bring in Walker? What time is the game? Seven o'clock. Yeah. Then maybe me and Emika. Okay. Well, like let's say opening day is one. P- you're you're in Hawaii, but opening day is one p.m. Would you would you get Walker out of school and come to the game? Because that's a fun yes. that's a fun dad thing. Take the kid out of school. We've and go started to, to do dad. stuff like that. Just just the two of us. But in this case, Emika would be so annoyed um, that it, actually now that I think about it, it's not a good option. I'd, I'd send her and Walker over over me and Walker, okay. which you you guys would probably enjoy. I would love that. I would love that. I was because she, she with. she's she's a big fan. I just love that face. <laughs> What's what's more absurd is who is also locally blacked out, which is the Angels, who are an hour away in another county. It's so dumb. I hate the blackout rule. Yeah. I hate it. Make it free. This one was simple and informational, but I thought maybe uh, some of your fans would want to know. Chris asked, I wanted to ask how uh, those of us without social media could keep up with all things Jesselnik. Is there an email list or do we just have to wait for announcements on the podcast? That's I mean, I, I think my the podcast announcements are better than the social media. Social media, someone else is running that. They're putting out things. I'm saying things that I remembered to say. <laughs> So I and I will and I will announce things before they actually get released. I'll be like, okay, tickets are going to be un- announced next week, but I'm going to tell you now what they're going to be, so you can know. Uh, I again, I deleted my Twitter, and I couldn't. I've never been happier. I wish I had done it so long ago. Just not looking at it anymore it frees up so much time, and I'm not seeing the dumbest shit that I used to see. Uh, that I, I do not miss it at all. Uh, Instagram, I'm not handling that. I might post some stories sometimes. TikTok, I hope it gets fucking banned. I have zero to do with TikTok. I don't even look at it anymore. Uh, that social media is, you'll, you'll see ticket mm. announcements, but it's kind of like the corporate j- face of Jesselnik, the social media. The podcast, this bitch has gone rogue. Rogue. <laughs> All announcements. I'll tell you right now where I'm going in Europe. It's not going to get announced for a month. I'll read you the list. I have to pull it up. Are you really gonna? Okay. No, I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, you, I, I mean, if you don't you know have Twitter, though, you missed um, the seven different angles of uh, Anthony Edwards' dunk of the year that I enjoyed showing to my children, to their amazement. I did watch quite a bit of o- that over and over and over. Even even Emika got into it, being like Walker makes her watch every single highlight of every sport that he thinks is good, makes her stop whatever she's doing. Uh, but that one was worth it. That one was worth it. Are you really going to draw this thing up? You want, me, you want me to read? I'm going to I'm going to name some cities and look just for you, Chris. When the final when the final list comes out, like it might be a little bit different, and there's something might have changed. This is what my agent sent me. And then things do change a little bit. I'm just going to name the cities that are here for me now. Lisbon, Portugal. Amsterdam. Yeah! Dublin. Boo. Belfast. Yeah! London. Yeah! Manchester. Glasgow. Athens. Nicosia. It's in Cyprus. Bucharest. Istanbul. Zurich. Berlin. Munich. What else we got here? Damn, you really are just uh, giving people the the free stuff. I guess the tickets Fuck. aren't on sale yet. You know what? There's there's more. There's a bunch more. Here's the more problem, here. though. The tickets will go on sale at some point, and uh, finding out the exact day that they go on sale. Hopefully, we have a podcast before that. You know, you sometimes the social helps. You know, I'll tell you exactly when they're going when they're going to be announced. It will be announced Monday, April fifteenth. Okay. At ten a.m. local time. So you got you got uh, you got some of those, and again, there's like four or five cities that I could not look at. I know the I know it ends in Oslo, but uh, but yeah, well, they'll be announced on the 15th. But by listening to the podcast, you got to hear it first in a very frustrating way.
All right, Vince asks, Greg and Anthony, I got to know what is your favorite part of Renner's new silk almond milk ad? And we've been waiting for people to ask this question. And I think uh, the best way to really address it is to first watch it here in the studio. Please. Whoa. I feel good. Nah, 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 nah. I knew that I would nah, 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 nah. I feel good. Nah, 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 nah. I knew that I would. So good. I got you. Hello, Dad. Whew. Yeah, you know, just getting back in my routine. I feel good. You know, I, I've seen that ad several times. I didn't know. I didn't know it was an ad. I thought I was just FaceTiming my boy. You know right. what I mean? That because we if you FaceTime Jeremy Renner, yeah. he's in the kitchen hanging out with his daughter, singing. Right. Dancing. Throwing utensils around. Dancing on the counter, which is a health violation. <laughs> for sure. But I'm glad to see he's up and around. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that was an ad for almond milk. I know that almond milk is bad for mm. the environment. Is it? I know that if you're going to get run over by your own steam plow, <laughs> you might want to be drinking real milk, not the almond milk. I do like that that ad served not only as you know a source of income for Jeremy, but also as a like response ad to all the haters out there that said he was done. He was saying he's back. I mean, that was like a, a statement ad from a politician that was like, I'm feeling good. I knew that I would. That snowplow is not, you know, has nothing on me. I'm back. What surprised me is that that was originally apparently a James Brown song. What? Yeah. No. I was like, this new Jeremy Renner song is fire. And they were like, actually, that's, he had to cover another Jeremy Renner acapella cover. What was, what was my favorite part of the ad? And you have to go online to see this. That's what they played during the Super Bowl. If you go and watch it online, you get to see all the outtakes of him hitting his daughter with the spoon. <laughs> yeah. He drills his daughter. That's not his daughter at the end. Because he had his daughter in the beginning, and she was like, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm not doing this anymore, Dad. And, and then left. So that girl is just some other, some random girl. But good on Jer. Yeah. Good on Almonds. Great. Getting the Jeremy Renner uh, endorsement. I think good on any product smart enough to get Renner to sing in your ad. Like, what's the point of Renner if he's not singing? Yeah. Jeep. And almond milk, they know what they're doing. Everybody else needs to get on the fucking stick <laughs> and get Renner dancing in his kitchen for his daughter, tone deaf singing, a cappella. You, I wonder. And his if, backup daughter. I wonder if he's like, can I get some? Can I get some music to this? And they're like, no, it's better this way. Throw the fucking spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, call the uh, almond milk comp company and tell them to give us money. Will do. Thank you. Next question's from Bob. Uh, hello, people. I hate the word penis, and whenever you say it, it makes me cringe. From here on out, can you please the use the word winky instead? Nobody can be offended by winky. Who? Uh, no one's. A f you can be like, ugh, penis makes me cringe. You know the word penis. Penis. Right. When do we? We don't say penis that much. I think you say penis. I think I just say it when like I'm reading an article. Yes. And that's the words that they use. That's because it, 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 it's what it is. We all got it. Unless you're a woman. They don't got it. Huh. <laughs> I say, I never say penis. I say cock and balls. How the, how's the cock and balls doing, Aaron? You know, that's what I say when I walk in right. here. Yeah. Aaron, what do you say? Top notch. Top notch, boss. No, I mean, not, not how do you answer me uh, oh. <laughs> when I asked how your cock and balls are doing. I'm saying if you're referring to, are you a penis man? Are you a winky man? Are you a cock and balls guy? Uh, Schwanz. Schwanz. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Dick. Uh, I mean, what, why would you get bothered by penis? Do people get bothered by penis? I know a lot of people don't like vagina. Don't like that word. Gay people? They don't like to oh. say it. No. Uh, penis is better. Penis is a penis little more awkward fine. than vagina. I know people like people don't like the word moist. 
Right. You know, pussy can send people up the wall. Uh, if you've got a brother named Dean, uh, he hates it when you call him Dean is the penis as a kid. Yeah. And if you just, if like you get in a fight and you just start calling him Dean is the penis, it works every time. It doesn't I, matter how old you are. That'd be a good one. I mean, if you called me a man named Anthony Dean is the penis, I'd flip out. <laughs> it's the worst thing you can say to me. <laughs> I don't know people who say penis people who have a clinical term for dong it, it creeps me out it's it's worse than whatever the worst way you could describe it is mm. you know what I mean I, I disagree when it comes to this what, what, finally 240 your, episodes deep so I what's disagree. the what's the worst what's the worst word you could you could hear for it I don't know I mean I say dick but I think dick might be worse right it's the like penis? which would I say in front of my kids Neither, probably, but if I had to choose one, I would choose penis. <laughs> Give me the dick. context. <laughs> I got, you just hit me, you know, actually this happened just yesterday. We were playing football and uh, he threw one and it hit me right in the penis. Now, I didn't have to vocalize where it hit me, uh, but it hurt, you know. Why did you throw that? It hit me. Uh, he uses wee wee, I believe. Still, I mean, he's nine years old. Though at some sure. point, you got to grow out of that. Yeah, I mean, you hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think wee wee's okay. Wee wee's okay. It depends on how you say it. If you try to be cute, and if you got to repeat it, you got to be careful. Same penis a bunch is gonna get old. You got to, right. you got to, you got to mix it up. Hog, wang, <laughs> dong, tallywhacker, tallywhacker. I think dong is all right, but it's like when you're reading about. You know, imagine reading a love scene, yeah. like how they describe, you know, if it's, if you're like, if you're like, oh, kids, you got me in the purple headed warrior, like <laughs> and you fucked up. As I a think dad. the word, the, the grossest one is member. I feel like mem members, disgusting. members bad. But if like, if, if your kids like hit me with a football, I'd be like, ah, kids, you split my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that song coming out of that really killed me. <laughs> uh, this is uh, hi, Miss Kim. Uh, Miss Kim, this is a question mainly for Anthony. Would love Greg's input. Any thoughts on the benefit held in February for RFK Jr.'s campaign by some comedians like Mike Binder, Bobby Lee, Dustin Ybarra, uh, and one for Greg, uh, who won't get asked because Anthony won't care. Who's your favorite winner of Top Chef? We have a bunch of in the Philly area. I'm very partial to Nick Elmy. That's a terrible choice. Seemed like a nice enough guy, but totally undeserving winner of Top Chef. I, my favorite uh, is now the host of Top Chef, Kristen Kish. Mm. Kristen's the best. I only watched a couple seasons, and I was like, I can't taste the food. This is a waste of time. No, it's the best show. It's a waste of time. It's so good. I heard that it, the food's bad, and they've got to pretend. It's always bad. Not on Top Chef. I don't yeah. believe that. When they're like, hey, unwrap this and then figure out what the ingredients are and then make, make a souffle and they, they've got fucking salt. You think that's going to be good? Yeah, but when they're just like cooking, which is half the time or so, it, it's good. I think the challenge You're is thinking of different bad. shows. You're thinking of different shows. Oh, am I? Yes. No, I'm thinking of a different show where they cook stuff. I'm too fucking stupid to remember seeing Top Chef 10 years ago. Yeah, there's different... There's <laughs> There's different shows. What was the original question? Uh, I loved Shirley, by the, the way. RFK. Shirley, who should have won. What season was that? New Orleans. That was the New Orleans Knicks. Did he win that? Love Shirley. Um, what was the first question? The uh, about RFK. the comics doing RFK's benefit. I, oh, yeah. I think it's always so funny when comedians get involved in politics in this way. I don't know if you remember. Like, was it? It was Andrew Yang who ran for president yes, and Dave Chappelle all of a sudden was like like stumping for him like he was going to make it happen it's always very funny because it doesn't make any fucking sense I don't know why anyone's listening to a comedian about who they're going to vote for ever but I think that some comedians like to feel important and when a politician shows pays them attention they'll be they get excited for it and they like want to go and help them uh, I think of like when Kanye went and met with Trump and people were mad and he's like well Trump, Obama wouldn't meet with me Trump would and they're like you're being used Kanye you're being used and I get why you're flattered by this attention uh, and it's always it always just seems tone deaf and weird RFK Jr. is not winning a fucking thing this fucking idiot is just going around on different podcasts I think it's so weird I think it's so weird when I see RFK it, it, Burr never had him on did he? no yeah like he was going on like Theo Vaughn Bad Friends I think it's lame as fuck 
I think he's a total fucking loser. And so seeing him, like, the idea of being, I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for. Oh, wait, Mike Binder's doing a fucking tight 15? <laughs> I'm going to vote for this guy who doesn't believe in vaccines. Is so stupid. Bobby Lee, I love Bobby Lee. The fact that he's involved in, with any politician should be, should be enough to get you kicked off the ballot. <laughs> Why you would ever be like, oh, Bobby Lee. That's his biggest red flag? I mean, he's got some others, including his own family uh, sent out a picture on St. Patrick's Day with Joe Biden to be like, fuck you, RFK Jr., we hate you. You are not winning if you have a comedian benefit, if you're running for president. You're not winning. I remember, I remember going to see Doug stand up for the first time, and it was someone who was running. I forget who, who it was. But she was running for governor and had stand up. And I was like, what is he going to do? Is he going to endorsing her? And he trashed her the entire set, <laughs> made fun of her <laughs> and her family who was there. And it was amazing <laughs> that you're just like you're trying to get some sort of attention. You don't. It's, it's, it's like if you have a restaurant that starts doing an open mic night, that restaurant is going to close within six months. They're trying the last thing they can. So this is RFK being like, maybe I can get a little more attention here. It is sad as fuck for all the comedians involved sad as fuck for the politician bringing the comedians in and sad for the audience who is sitting there listening to Bobby Lee's same 10 minutes he does everywhere else uh -huh. only being like and by the way hey maybe vaccines aren't good hey maybe the one Kennedy who the entire fucking family has disowned shouldn't be in charge of something hey maybe Cheryl Hines doesn't have the best radar for who she should marry. Well, at least he didn't go with Aaron Rodgers, you know, as his vice president. He instead, he apparently is choosing someone that's like a billionaire and can fund his campaign. Going to ESPN.com and seeing Aaron, Aaron Rodgers says he does believe children were killed at Sandy Hook is the most bizarre headline I've ever seen <laughs> on a website. Um... All right, that was your RFK answer. And since I'll never have a chance again, Stephanie Izzard, we went to her restaurant, The Girl and the Goat, downtown LA. Might, she might be the best Top Chef. Woman. That was a great That was a great restaurant. She might be the best. Bro Brooke Williamson was great. Richard Blaze. Hung was kind of the original goat way back. And I'll say again, I love, I love Bobby Lee. I like Mike Bender. I, don't know I do not know why they're doing that. I would say this to their faces. What the fuck are you doing? This is a waste of your time. This is so stupid. How much money did you raise? None. Hey now, it's from uh, Stacy. She loves the podcast. She's been listening only for about a month and recently started watching the YouTube channel. I was watching recently and uh, in a lineup of recommended videos, there was one of your podcasts and another show I watch sometimes. Chicken Shop Date. Please see the attached photo and tell me that the guest for Chicken Shop Date, Dominic Fike, Fike doesn't bear a striking resemblance uh, to Greg. Love you guys. You helped me get me through. So we're looking at it now, and we're looking at this uh, boy toy, and uh, she's saying it's a striking resemblance, and I just wanted to bring that up to, uh, to point out what handsome uh, striking resemblances I have. If Timothy Chalamet and Greg had a baby, yeah, it would be Dominic Fike. I mean, the problem is that the picture she sent, I look a lot more like Tom Rosenthal in that picture than I do like Dominic Fike. But I do appreciate it when people send me the lookalikes, and it's almost always Seth Cohen, uh, who did a good job. Seth Cohen from The O.C., also known as Adam Brody, who is in American fiction and does a good job at it. Mm, he was. He was good in that. I, like I was that. like, that was, I, every once in a while, I don't like to act, but every once in a while I see a role in a movie where I'm like, oh, I would, that would have been fun. You been good at that. And Brody in that movie, I'm like, that would have been fun to do. And I saw Love Lies Bleeding and Dave Franco plays the biggest fucking asshole of all time that I like turned to Liz and was like, I, would, I wish I was playing that part right now. <laughs> he was so fucking great in that movie uh, that, uh, that I would have enjoyed it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's you, Greg. You got to grow the hair out, man. I'm growing the hair out. You got to grow You got to get some flop on it. Get some flop on top. And then we're talking. Uh, I, I still could, and I'm probably running out of time. It's going to start getting thinner at some point. It's just starting to just a little. But, yeah, it, back in the New Orleans days, it's like that shit would get curly. The girls liked it. You got to make up for your lack of height in some way. If we both start growing our hair out, if we're both – and every week people are like, let's see how long it is long now. Long hair, boys. Let's see how long it is now. That's That would be the title of every episode. 
<laughs> and, and we and we would <laughs> we could measure our hair every week. I think our numbers would fucking triple. <laughs> Dang, we've gotten pretty deep in this. I haven't even gotten to uh, this whole section of like really heartfelt ones. I don't think we're going to get there. We, we have so many good ones. Uh, Mike it wants to ask, I, I was curious about this one. Loyal listeners since uh, RJVP, some Pete Holmes theme question. When Anthony was on Pete's TBS show, he said Pete was dressed like the CEO, CEO of a pumpkin patch. It was one of my all-time favorite lines, and I think about it often. Did Anthony have that line prepped? Or did he think of it in the moment? I'll ask the second question after you answer that. Uh, it's funny. I remember this specifically. Uh, I go to do this show. Uh, I forget what the show was called. It was Pete Holmes' like, late night talk show. And we're in the dressing room getting makeup or makeup put on. And we're, t- we're riffing back and forth. And I'm making fun of him. And I'm just like, it's, I have like three, you look like this, you look like that. And, he's, and everyone's laughing. And he's like, save it for the show. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, when when that moment comes up where we start roasting each other, I'm like, I've got, I've already done six jokes on him, and I in that moment I truly had to be like, what's another? And then was like CEO of a pumpkin patch, which became uh, probably the most watched clip of that whole fucking show. Um, and mm. uh, but yeah, that was totally in the moment. And I remember thinking like, oh, I've like I've already made fun of him like six different times. What else do I got? And that was it. So sometimes you got to back yourself into a corner, man. And then the brilliance comes out. See, my, uh, my memory's pretty bad, and yet I remember exactly where I was in my New York apartment when I, when I watched that uh, segment. Because it fucking cracked, cracked me up. That was amazing. Uh, he also said he's a, stand of, uh, he's a fan of Pete's stand-up. And uh, what are your thoughts on comedians who laugh at their own jokes like Pete? I get it. I get that it helps. You know, I remember seeing, like, I remember doing the show in New York once where everyone's just bombing, Every, like everyone. And it's great comics. Everyone's just eating it. And then Godfrey got on at the end and, like, murdered. And it was like, oh, Godfrey's having so much fun. Like, Godfrey's laughing for everyone in between jokes. And it was like, oh, that's how you do that. That I get that it's, like, it's a skill. It makes the, you know, it helps the show. I hate it. Uh, I would never do Chappelle it. I don't. It. Yes. Uh, a lot of people do it, and I, I never like it. Um, I get why it works, and if you use it sparingly, okay. If you do it a ton, it's probably natural for some people, but you could you could cut it down if you wanted. It, it becomes un- when you if you're on the road and you're doing a lot of shows, it becomes unnatural eventually, and still so it becomes. There are ways that you you have that kind of like that honest mistake you do in every set. It's fine, um, but uh, you know I have not. You watched the Pete Holmes set in, in fifteen years. He was your, one of your buddies back in the day. Mm-hmm. You're good buds. Yeah. I remember. We, we've been friends a long time. Let's wrap it up. Two more. Uh, this next question. When Emika finally leaves Greg, is he more likely to date Jackie Robinson's wife or Emma Stone's character in Poor Things? And what would his opening line be when he meets their parents? <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, just want to see what you did. So, with this his, so his options are Jackie Robinson's widow. It just honestly, that just she's still alive. Yes, um, that just made me laugh. So, I, and then I put put it in the show. That, I didn't really think past that. But if yeah. it's between Jackie Robinson's widow and a fictional character from a movie that I have not seen, <laughs> yeah. I'm going Jackie Robinson's widow. Yeah, thank you. I'm just I'm going to ask you to be gentle. Um, I th- I'd like to be there when you introduce her to your children. I think that would be fun. Um, and I think if we had Emika in here right now, and we will get her in the studio one day soon, I think she would say she would prefer for you to be with Jackie Robinson's widow. I mean, that was part of her vows when you guys got married, was that he did that to his part, and in that case, Jackie Robinson's widow. What does Jackie Robinson's widow look like now, Aaron? Is she still getting it done? Yeah, sure, she looks great yeah. for 100. She's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I regret choosing this question. Because women's sexual peak, it's different from men. You know, men's sexual peak is whatever age I am right now. <laughs> women's sexual peak, you're getting in the 90s. Triple digits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, triple digits. But she's, you know, she's a national treasure. All right, final question. Emma Stone, what did Emma Stone ever do for baseball? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. 
All right, this one's it's a little heavier. About two years ago, I got a devastating phone call letting me know that an ex had taken their life. Although we weren't dating at the time, I did spend four years of my life with this person. I know I couldn't have done anything to change the course of events, uh, but I still have dreams like they're here. I can warn them of the trials to come, only to wake up to the harsh reality. I know you've both experienced a great loss in your personal lives, even uh, since the beginning of this podcast. My question to you guys is, uh, which way do you guys... Which way do you guys heal or find comfort during times of great loss? My life is going sm- smoothly, but I can't shake the feeling of not being able to share it with friends that are no longer with us. Uh, yeah, heavy question. Um, I would say, honestly, my advice is to turn to literature. I think that, uh, you know, having dealt with loss, having dealt with uh, suicide, um, it helps to turn to to literature and uh, you d- it take the blame off yourself. You can't, as someone takes their own life, uh, there's nothing you could have done. Uh, that that's their decision. You can't carry that guilt with you. But reading about it, reading about characters who have been in your position and how they handle it, and usually it's it, you know time heals the wounds. But you get to read their story and find the end point where I think that helps you to just to know that that guilt will go down and those uh, those those horrible feelings will heal with time. And you'll never forget the person. You probably don't want to. But I think that reading about people who've been in your situation, and there are a legion of books about this, uh, is, the, is the, the only way I can think of to help you uh, deal with it. Yeah, it's a good answer. Because I, I did read different books about, about grief, about loss, um, whether it's nonfiction or, or fiction. And I think that was a, a good way to connect. But everyone, everyone goes through losing people or at different grief, and it's also different in, in different ways. I think some people... They want to keep doing what they're doing. They're almost putting off the pain and you'll deal with it at some point. And that's fine. I, when I think about when my friend died, Chris, I, I sort of followed the lead of his widow, Keisha. And one thing I thought, which helped me a lot, that she did a lot is you know, she talked about him a lot. Like she, we still do. Like sort of leaned into it. Some people are so freaked out about death and, and plenty of people you talk to about him or about loss, they're not going to be really be ready for it. And they're not going to want to talk about it. And you'll figure that out quickly. But the people that are like, I loved talking about him, remembering him, like leaning into it. Cause that makes you feel like they're still there and, and uh, that you're celebrating them and that they would love that. And everyone's different. But I, I thought that was good that from the beginning and that continued that sort of, talking about it with whoever that you think is a good person to listen to about it would is never a bad thing like celebrating that person yeah i mean the bottom line you got to do what you got to do if it helps you to talk about it talk about it helps you to get mad at the person get mad at them whatever you got to do it's a process but you're still here and you've got to make the most of that so uh and there's no no one answer try different things try getting mad one day try reading about it the next day try feeling bad for them try walking in their shoes seeing what 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 the deal is but uh but you're still here make the most of it all right do you want to do one more question or you want to go to recommendations let's do one more i don't want to go out and fucking that 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 was why that's why i asked you um (laughs) Rob says a while back, John Reinman did a podcast where he told his favorite memory of you, which was your root root skit pitch to Fallon. Uh, I love your stand up like John's work as well. Do you have any favorite memories of working with him? He has a two part question. I'll get to the second part, but I don't even know what, what's the root roots skit pitch. Roots. I, and when I worked on Fallon, uh, John Ryman was a, a monologue writer who came on uh, while I was there and stayed long past the time I left uh, and is no, now no longer there. I haven't talked to John in a couple years, but uh, when he left, he was like angry about it and did a podcast kind of like kind of trashing the show a little bit and kind of uh, giving some inside dirt, which I was uh, surprised by oh, mo- mostly because he wasn't like doing ads in the podcast. So we, I'm like, you're not getting money for this. You're just like making people mad who could possibly hire you and there's no benefit other than just like airing this out and that involved you somehow or you just told he did a, there was a whole episode about me and just like stories about me weirdly that. two people emailed was this recent because two people two emailed about this story so that's pretty it random. was a few years ago so and he that. talked some wild shit like nothing bad about me but like in he texted me to be like hey i did this just so you know i don't know if you're gonna be mad and i listened to it and i was like you can't hurt me with like you can say a story of me like telling about my body 
boss to go fuck himself and it, that doesn't really affect me but why are you doing this and I, then he eventually took them all down uh good hmm. for him but uh the roots roots pitch was we'd have to the monologue writers have to come in and pitch with everybody else but we were thinking of like jokes all day so we would like last minute slap down some idea of what to do and one day my my pitch was roots roots where we remade roots uh but the roots were the white people and jimmy was the slave <laughs> and everyone laughed <laughs> everyone laughed except jimmy and jimmy was like you really think you want to go pitch this to the roots and i go the roots will fucking love this <laughs> are you kidding me and then and then that was the end of it they were like do not tell the roots about this do not tell anyone did you though you had I, I bet someone did i listen once i left the pitch room i never thought about it again like someone yeah. have to remind me of something that i did in there <laughs> because i was just like i shouldn't be quest here. love was a fan of you though i bet he would have i mean i know they would have found quest of would have loved it he would have loved it <laughs> but but I, but I get why it was not accepted as a pitch i couldn't imagine them doing it but i was like i've got to say something in here and that was uh that was my shot that's an amazing idea uh he also asked um in the same email how much he mentioned how much how strange it was when my parents were in uh, an episode of the Justin Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. Jerry B. Junior Vice President. That was now probably about four years ago. We were at the Comedy Central Studios. Mm -hmm. Both my parents were there. Tom wasn't really on the mic by my memory, but but uh, Debbie was pretty much there throughout or for a long period and how much he loved that and what a weird uh, fun dynamic that is and that he really was hoping you would someday have your parents on the show whether that would ever happen you know i would love to have my parents on the show uh, i know my mom listens to every podcast my mom has typically not wanted to, she's like i don't want to do that like i don't want to be involved Whereas your mom is like let's go this is fun <laughs> your mom was like super into it i think my dad would be more into like my dad was when i had my tv show and i asked my parents to be on it for the justin like offensive my mom was like no like almost mad that i asked in a way of like, I don't want to be, I don't want to deal with all of that. Um, in a way, I totally understand. A lot of people are like that. My dad was like, oh my God, of course. Yes, I can't wait. This is great. Then I think my dad would like to be in here and talk to us, but he doesn't understand like the podcast. He'd be the way your dad was when we did that podcast. He was just kind of sitting there like, okay, people are listening to this. That I could see it. If they, when they come and visit, I'll ask them if they'll come in here. And it would be fun. Uh, if Aaron could figure it out how to configure the studio. Oh, yeah. That's the hard part. I mean, but we are I don't, sitting here I don't with, know if they, there are two empty chairs literally right next to us. I don't know if they would. I don't know why anyone would want to uh, put themselves into this world of internet comments and, you know, this kind of shit. My dad, I think, would be cool with it if he understood what was going on. Uh, my mom, I don't know. But I, I hope not, she would. They're not tracking down the comments. My parents wouldn't be. Now, they would be even more into it, I bet. Uh, back then, I don't, Tom was not a regular listener. Now he loves this shit. Mm -hmm. Listens every week. Uh, Debbie's, you know, I guess she's always been into it. Uh, so she would, she, she would love to do it again, I bet. Maybe, I mean, next year, uh, <laughs> Greg and I are going to go to Hawaii and bring my parents and his parents. <laughs> and then maybe we could do like a whole sit down, like a, uh, just a whole, a whole episode there with all of them. I'll bring the gear. And now it's time for... Choo -choo. Recommendation Station. Greg, let's wrap this mailbag up. Okay, I'm going to recommend a book, uh, which is called Rental Person Who Does Nothing by Shoji Morimoto. And so this is a memoir, and it's a good book, but it's an even better concept and idea. His whole life almost seems like an art project. Uh, it started essentially as a Twitter account, but just something that he does in life. It's this guy who is in his 20s, may maybe young 30s, in Japan who was sick of his jobs and he had saved a little money and he just put up an advertisement to be a rental person and you could just rent him for anything but the stipulation was he's not going to do anything he'll just be there just like a uh and how he defines nothing is is interesting because it's like come with me um to drop me off at work this day i'm kind of afraid for this various reason or come with me uh, to this event, or I want to talk to someone about this, but he doesn't really respond. He just like sits there or does like strange activities where you just feel like you want someone else there, but you don't 
want the commitment of it being a friend or someone that you know or whatever. And he just was like, I'm so bored in my life. I think this would be like a, a more interesting way to live, but I don't want to do anything. Uh, and so he has been a rental person now for like three or four years and it sort of took off, but he doesn't accept any money. He'll accept like you can pay for his travel and the food if you're eating with him or whatever. Uh, but he, he didn't do it to make money. Like he doesn't make any money off of it. He, he has a wife and kids and it's just like a weird, fascinating look into Japanese culture. And Emika pointed out, she read it first and was like, it is very Japanese. Uh, it's only like 160 yeah. pages. There's not many words in this book. It's a little book uh, called Rental Person Who Does Nothing uh, by Shoji Morimoto. But it was interesting. It was that sounds cool. And it does sound extremely Japanese. Um, I'm going to double down on Greg's recommendation from last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, yeah. Two weeks ago now. Uh, I was about to start reading this book. Or actually, I'd heard about the book, heard the hype, and kind of like was waiting a little bit. And then Greg gave it such a strong recommendation. I downloaded it immediately and read it uh, this weekend. It's called Martyr. M-A-R-T-Y-R with an exclamation point by Kaveh Akbar. Kaveh Akbar. Uh, it is a banger. It might, it might end up being the book of the year. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. And uh, definitely a bunch of awards coming for this one. And there's a twist. It's a, it's a great book. You think it's going to be like some like, you know, by, by the title, I assumed it was going to be some like, uh, this is, uh, we're going to get into what it is to be a Muslim. You know, mm -hmm. and it's nothing to do with that. No. Uh, the main character well, it is, is a like, little bit, a, but yes. a little bit, yes, but like not the way you would you would think by the title. Uh, character is a total piece of shit, drug addict, like getting his life together, which I love. And there is a twist, and the twist hits so hard that I'm like, spend the next hundred page. I had to stop and think, like, did they earn it? Did the, is this a cheap twist? It, it was so powerful. And thinking back, like, it's bulletproof. This book is perfect. And it, it should be required reading. It's incredible. Greg and I totally align on this. Uh, favorite book of the year so far? Probably going to be my favorite by the, at the end of the year, too. Martyr by Kaveh Akbar. It is a banger. Aaron, I'm, I'm throwing to you out of politeness. I'm not uh, expecting anything. Do you want to talk right now? Sure, I'll recommend Poor Things. We talked before the episode. You haven't seen it yet. I but, still haven't seen uh, it. Uh, Poor Things by Yorgos Lanthimos uh, with Emma Stone, who won the Oscar. Uh, it's really funny. It's really silly. Uh, it's really weird. You uh, said you didn't expect to like it as much as you did, so that's interesting. Yeah, because I didn't. I've only seen the favorite of his movies, and I didn't like it. Um, so this was a pleasant. How dare you? Uh, you got to see the other ones, man. I, I know. I'm telling I know, you, I, yeah, I, It makes me want to see the lobster and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Go go see go see those. Uh, they're, so, they're so much better. And again, I, I like the favorite, but I love those other ones way more. You're the first person to tell me that the uh, the poor things is funny, Aaron. Oh, no yeah. one said it's funny. Yeah, everyone's it's, like, oh, it's good, it's great, it's uh, it's wild. I, I'm gonna I I'm gonna watch it. How they couldn't laugh at Mark Ruffalo? Maybe maybe I'll watch it tonight. Probably not. The fact that it's like for free on Hulu, it's like I, I, I'm gonna get to it, but I don't know when. Yeah, we'll see. And that was choo -choo. Recommendation Station. Debbie, get me out of this mailbag. Whoa, Nelly Furtado. That's a spicy meatball. Is that okay, Greg? 